good morning today our topic for discussion is class 3 malocclusion okay edward angle classified malocclusion in 1899 based on anterior posterior relationship of the jaws with each other as class 1 class 2 and class 3 malocclusion okay so as the name suggest in a class 1 malocclusion the mesobuccal cusp of the up maxillary uh, molar will occlude in the mes uh, buccal group of the mandibular molar in class 2 It is a distal buccal group which occludes in the buccal group of the mandibular uh, first molar. Okay, as in class three, the uh, mesobuccal cusp of the maxillary molar occludes between the mandibular first and the second molar. Okay. Now, as the name suggests, uh, class three malocclusion. It is very difficult, very easy to identify, but very difficult to treat. Okay. The other name for a class three malocclusion is. pre-normal occlusion or a mesial occlusion okay so the mandible will be in a mesial relation to the uh, maxilla now angle classified malocclusion uh, skeletal um, class 3 malocclusion into a true or a skeletal class 3 a pseudo class 3 and class 3 subdivision okay so in a true or a skeletal class 3 the features are the prognathic mandible a retrognathic maxilla or a combination of both that is a prognathic mandible and a retrognathic maxilla now in a pseudo or a functional or a postural class 3 usually this occurs due to occlusal prematurities premature loss of the deciduous posterior or enlarged edenoids okay in class 3 subdivision we have class 3 on one side and class 1 malocclusion or molar relation on the other side Now, what are the geologic factors relating to a class three malocclusion? One is hereditary, environmental influences, the functional, skeletal, dental. Okay. Now, in hereditary, mainly the class three malocclusion is inherited; it is familial. Okay, so it's one of the main geologic factors for a class three malocclusion. What are the environmental influences? That is the role of habits and mouth breath breathing. functional due to abnormal tongue position or nasal respiratory problems or any neuromuscular conditions a class 3 malocclusion can occur skeletal that is it could be due to a difference in the growth of the maxilla of the mandible it could be due to a retrognathic maxilla or a prognathic mandible or it could be due to both a retrognathic man maxilla and a prognathic mandible a combination of both now dental it could be due to ectopic eruption of the maxillary central incisor or early loss of deciduous molars now coming to the clinical features of a class 3 malocclusion we can divide it into extraoral features and intraoral features so what are the extraoral features in a class 3 malocclusion that is the patient will have a concave profile anterior facial divergence retrusive nasomaxillary area a prominent chin and a steep mandibular plane angle okay what are the intraoral features okay as the name suggest a class 3 malocclusion so the molar relation will be a class 3 with a canine in class 3 um, relationship the maxillary arch will be narrow and there will be a decreased overjet edge to edge bite or a reverse overjet present there will be crowding in the upper arch and spacing in the lower anterior teeth now coming to the treatment protocol we can divide the treatment of a class 3 malocclusion into two that is uh, in a growing patient and a non growing patient so the treatment is different in a growing patient and non growing patient okay in a growing patient we can divide it into two that is a skeletal and a dental similarly in non growing patients also we can divide up the treatment into two that is a dental and a skeletal okay in a skeletal growing patient if the man maxilla is retrognathic then we can go in for a maxillary contraction using a face mask okay and in case if the mandible is uh, prognathic and the maxilla is retrognathic we can use a face mask or an a chin fit with a chin cup okay and if the mandible is prognathic we can use a chin cup to restrict the growth of the mandible okay in both the cases 
that is in dental growing as well as non growing patients we can do an orthodontic orthodontic treatment fixed orthodontic treatment can be done okay in non growing patients also we can classify them into a dental and a skeletal okay now dental as i told you orthodontic treatment can be done fixed orthodontic treatment can be done in a skeletal case we can divide it into mild and moderate and the next one is severe okay in mild or moderate cases what we can do is we can go in for a orthodontic camouflage by doing a fixed orthodontic treatment skeletal the maxillary it could be due to maxillary retrognathism or it could be due to a mandibular prognathism okay so maxillary retrognathism we can do a maxillary advancement okay that is a treatment for a skeletal maxillary retrognathism now in severe class 3 with mandibular prognathism we can go in for a surgical setback that is a bilateral surgical split osteotomy so these are the treatment options for growing and non growing patients okay so what are the what are the appliances that we can use okay, the different appliances that we can use are myofunctional appliances then fixed orthodontic appliances okay and others could be a face mask or that can be used okay so what are the indications of a myofunctional appliance so the myofunctional appliance can be used in mild to moderate skeletal discrepancies usually it is used in growing patients and these function appliances are designed to counteract the muscle forces acting on the maxillary complex now a tranquil key let us tranquil regulator okay so this appliance is a myofunctional appliance in this the vestibular shields extend into the depths of the sulcus okay both in the upper as well as the lower and upper usually it is close to the uh, alveolar process as so, so the mandible it is close to the alveolar process so as to restrict the growth of the mandible in the maxilla it is it shields the lips and uh, away from the uh, vestibular shields so that there is a stretch of the periosteum which allows the forward growth of the maxilla okay the shields are fitted closely to the alveolar process of mandible to hold or redirect the growth posteriorly okay. now orthopedic appliances that is a face mask okay these are used in patients with mild to moderate class 3 malocclusion that is in growing patients it is used okay with a, a maxillary retrognathism and a mandibular prognathism okay this consists of two pads okay which uh, which obtains anchorage from the forehead and the chin and these two pads are connected by means of a metal framework so you can see in the picture this is a picture of a face mask uh, where the anchorage is obtained from the forehead and the chin okay and there are intraoral elastics which uh, engage the hook from the an uh, canine region onto the uh, face mask okay this is how the redirection of maxillary growth takes place now chin cup this is mainly used in mild cases of mandibular prognathism usually in grows are uh, used in cases of growing patients so this used in skeletal class 3 malocclusion with a relatively normal maxilla and moderately protrusive mandible this consists of occipital uh, there are two types that is occipital bull and a vertical bull uh, chin cup okay this usually restricts the growth of the mandible so next is orthodontic camouflage Okay. so what are the indications of uh, orthodontic camouflage skeletal discrepancies not resolved during mixed dentition malocclusion recurring during adolescence after treatment in childhood and mild moderate uh, prognathism and mild crowding okay. so you can do cam of orthodontic camouflage with extraction or without extraction in this you can give a class 3 elastics that is from upper molar to the lower anterior corrects the molar relation by moving the molars medially now the last option is orthognathic surgery now what are the indications of orthognathic surgery continued disproposition disproportionate sagittal and vertical growth severe skeletal maxillary retrusion and mandibular prognathism or both it could be used in usually it is used in non growing patients surgery is never done in a growing case usually surgery is done after 18 years of age after the growth stops okay next option is a cleft lip and palate next facial asymmetries 
So uh, orthognathic surgery is the last option. And in severe cases only, orthognathic surgeries should be done. In growing patients, it should never be carried out.